welcome back to the Obsession Engineering and McCrum's Motorcycles Aprilia RS660 Super Stock Super Twin build. So I've had all the fun actually going and riding around on the bike and now I need to take it apart and fit lots of racy blingy things. The really nice thing with building a brand new motorcycle into a race bike is that all the bits you're dealing with are nice and new. The downside of building something that's as new as this RS660 Aprilia is that not all the bits are particularly openly available yet. So there have been a bit of delay getting some of the parts we needed for the bike, but I do have the bulk of the bits we need now and the rest of the stuff is meant to be here in the next couple of days, which is kind of useful because it's Tuesday and this bike is meant to be getting raced at Scarborough on Saturday. To turn this gorgeous little Aprilia from a road bike into a proper race bike, we're going to need some parts. Now, we already have fitted, by the guys at McCrum's, the full Akrapovic genuine accessory exhaust system and the map to suit. And as the engine performance side of things is concerned, that's all it's getting. But we are going to need some bling for the chassis. When the bike was dropped off, it was dropped off with a set of genuine accessory Aprilia rear sets, which I've managed to leave at home today. We've also got a few bits that have turned up a bit more recently. So, I have some engine protection so that if you crash it, it doesn't wear straight through the engine cases. Uh, a lever guard that's a little bit nicer than the one that's on it. Some paddock stand bobbins, a shark fin, and my favourite bit so far, a Bitubo brand new, new spec, double XZ fully adjustable rear shock. And this is proper bling. So this is the newest version of Bitubo's top of the range race shock and we have high and low speed adjustment for compression and rebound damping we've got a preload adjuster on there we've got a ride height adjuster on the bottom and these are an absolutely awesome piece of kit it's basically an evolution of what I run on my BMW and I love Bitubo stuff to bits so that's going in there will be some cartridges to follow they just haven't turned up from Italy yet one thing you may have noticed I haven't mentioned yet is bodywork because we don't really want to race it in the road kit because it's expensive, it's not the lightest stuff because it's got headlights and bits in it and we need something with an enclosed belly pan to meet the rules. So the bodywork is supposed to be with me on Thursday. So fingers crossed that turns up. The first job on the agenda is to remove the very, very temporary paddock stand bobbins I've put on for Cadwell Park and fit something that's a little bit more permanent. What I particularly like about these GB Racing paddock stand bobbins is they actually spin round. So when you put the, the paddock stand on, it sort of slides them around as opposed to undoing the bolt. It's just one of those little details you think somebody's actually thought about it. And ignore the dirt on the back wheel. I will actually clean that at some stage. Now that the bike is a little bit easier to work on, it's time to get it undressed. Oh yeah! Surely everybody likes a stripper except today the stripper is actually me, so you are excused if you don't like it so much. To get this one side panel off, you need almost every tool in the toolbox, because in the little tub of bolts and stuff, we've got normal formal Allen keys, uh, XZ, we've got little push connectors, we've got Torx bits, uh, that one's an 8mm hex head, that's a normal Phillips screwdriver, uh, and then there's some uh, little 2.5mm cap screw th jobs. Why would you build a fairing with that many variations of fastener on it? I just don't get it. The headlight fairing comes off fairly easily without having to use every single tool in the toolbox. We're making reasonable progress on the strip down. We now have a mostly naked bike. And it's interesting when you start working on things, there's certain things you notice, like they've put an adjustable swinging arm pivot in this bike. I mean, you don't get that in an ER6, do you? Proper sort of race adjustment. For things like that yeah it's quite trick i mean aprilia do like to make an adjustable chassis and they've not skimped on this one by the look of it so that's it top fairing and bits is off now the game will be when we get the race fairing whether these sort of infill panels that duck to the air towards the radiator whether we can actually keep those on the bike because if we can keep them on the bike it ducks the air in towards the radiator and you know, it might be a little bit neater, and it means we don't have to relocate the reg wreck and the water bottle and bits from the other side. The only game will be if the fairing doesn't fit with that. We shall have to wait and see where the fairing turns up. But yeah, that's not a bad start. 
So I got to the stage where I'd got most of the bodywork off the Aprilia, and then I had to run away and go and put an engine in the Super Twin. I'm racing this weekend, because I'm not actually going to be racing this bike, but we'll come back to that later. Then I might have also spent a day at Alton Park at the BSB test, mechanicing for the True Love Brothers, and I've not really had enough sleep, and it's Thursday morning, and we're supposed to be racing this bike on Saturday. So it's all going terribly well, I best get cracking. So after my long day out yesterday at Alton Park, it's time to get cracking on the Aprilia. And the first thing to do is remove the pillion seat and the little holder that holds it in place. Then I can take the seat unit panels off. Then I can go underneath and take the number plate holder off. And finally, we need to take the petrol tank off. And then she's going to be lovely and naked. Right, so it definitely looks like actual progress now because I've got all the bodywork off. Taking the number plate hanger off makes the biggest difference to the aesthetics. The tail light is still in because... We are going to need a rain light for ACU regulations, so I'm leaving that in, in the very small chance it'll actually fit inside the new race fairing that we're getting. If not, I shall take it off, and I shall fit a sort of completely separate rain light. But we're getting there now. There are a few extra little bits I can take off, like the uh, rear seat lock, the little plastic cover that covers the uh, battery and bits can come off, um, some of the breather pipes and bits that are meant to vent onto the floor would just vent into the belly pan so I can take those off but I really need to start doing the bigger lumps first and the biggest lump we really need to do first is put the fancy Aprilia Racing rear sets on because in this box is uh, lots and lots of bubble wrap and eventually in the bottom there's bits of metal and those will replace these standard rear sets. Now fitting this could be a little bit fun and games because as you can see, these are attached to the swinging arm pivot bolt. So I'm going to have to take the swinging arm pivot out, which means the swinging arm can fall out of the bike, which means I need to support the bike somehow. <sighs> really pleases this is a first thing in the morning job. So in preparation for removing the old rear set and having to remove the swinging arm pivot, I've undone the braking bits so they're not attached anymore. I've done the same on the other side, sort of removed all the gear linkage bits. Now, you might be wondering, why make it so complicated that your rear set has to do all this work? Well, firstly, it saves a load of space, because you don't need a big chunk of frame coming down here, filling this gap in. Secondly, the crankcases are nice and stiff and solid, so you don't actually need it for strength, it's just there. And it actually saves a load of weight, because you've not got a big lump of aluminium. So, you know, it saves space, it saves weight, it does create a little bit more work right now, not the end of the world. I mean, Ducati have been doing this for years and they seem to get on all right with it, and now Aprilia are doing it. I can't really fault them. So, in preparation for actually taking the swinging arm, in effect, taking the swinging arm out of the bike, I've got the bike on an engine hoist. As you can see, we're slung around where the pillion pegs go so nothing can move, and we've got most of the weight at the moment. Now, while I've got this, which is the bike apart, I'm also going to take the shock out because I've got to change it anyway, this is a good opportunity. So I'm going to take the shock out first, so that the swinging arm isn't sort of getting pushed away from the bike by the spring, and I've taken the plastic cover that sits over here that makes it look like a brace swinging arm when it's not, because I want to get to that bolt there. And the next thing to do is undo the big nut, undo the little bolts in the bottom, and then everything should be free, and bit by bit I can push my swinging arm pivot out, and I'll probably leave something in here, like a screwdriver or a bar or something, so that the whole bike doesn't actually fall in half. <sighs> right, let's crack on with it. First stage is to wiggle the shock absorber out of the bike so the swinging arm is nice and free, and then I can take the swinging arm pivot bolt out and push a bar in so the bike doesn't fall in half. So I've got down here on the bench the old footrest assembly, and the new one comes in two bits. We're going to have... The bit that sort of replaces the bit that attaches the swinging arm pivot to the engine, and then the actual bit that holds the footrests on will be fitted down here later. So, what I need to do is, using the instructions that come with the rear set, I need to fit these to the bike, and make sure I've got all the space and everything in the right place, and tighten everything up. So with the uh, gear change side rear set plate, it's meant to fit sort of here, and there is the sort of a standard space that comes with the bike that sits behind here. Unfortunately, it is actually designed to also fit with this pivot for the side stand in the way, and that's 10mm thick, 
and it weighs quite a lot because it's made of steel. And I don't want the side stamp of it. I actually find it a little bit strange that they've sold a for racing use only rear set and then you have to leave the footrest on it, uh, the side stand on it even. So what I've done is I've just nipped in the machine shop and I've made a 10mm space to replace it. So I'm going to fit all this side and then I can fit the big nut and torque everything up and move on to actually fitting levers and footrests. So now I've got the bolts hold the engine to the swinging arm and everything tightened up. What I'm actually going to do next is fit the rear shock because once the shock's fitted into here then the bike's nice and stable and I can just put it on a normal paddock stand and get it back on the bench. And then it's much easier to fiddle around with all the actual footrest bits when I've got the jack bench jacked up to a sensible height. So this is my utterly bling Bitubo XXZ, fully brand new, fully adjustable, utterly top of the range, brilliant shock absorber. Do Can you tell I like Bitubo stuff? Anyway, right, that's going to literally slot into the bike like that. Bolt at either end, really quite simple. And then I can put the bike on paddock stands and move it around again. Look how pretty that is nestled in there. Uh, I have refitted the rear hugger because I don't want all the stones and dirt and water and whatever throwing at the lovely, lovely new shock. But I'm not refitting this cover over here because we don't actually need it. And I haven't decided yet whether it looks better with it or without it. I will admit the swinging arm without it is a little bit plain, but when you put it on it just looks like a big lump of plastic, so I'm not sold on that. Right, anyway, now I can actually take the bike off the uh, engine hoist and I can get it back on its paddock stand, back on the bench. Right, it's time to build the rest of the rear set. I'm on the brake side at the moment and the brake lever, which sits bolted to this hole behind here, so that's sort of going to sit on there, and then the whole thing... When I zoom up here, we'll bolt onto the back of there, and then I've got loads and loads of places I can put my footrest, and the brake will attach, and hopefully then everything will work and it'll look nice and it'll be very racy. So that's the brake side rear set all fitted, and I have to admit with its little sort of carbon fibre um, protectors and heel guards and stuff like that, and they are nicely machined, they are a very nice piece of kit. They are quite expensive. I think the retail on these is 720 quid for a set, but they are lovely. So they should be a lot better. I've put them right in the middle of their adjustment range. So uh, when our special rider uh, comes down and goes all prima donna, we have options to move everything. So that's it. Cracking. That's one side done. I better go around the other side and fit the other side. And I have my gear change side fitted as well. The only downside with this kit is it's in road shift. And if you want to put it in race shift, you have to buy some extra bits, which I assume would be this lever with a pivot point down here, and then it'd work the other way round. But I think that's a little bit, you know, short-sighted of them, because if you're going to make something that's got for race use only written on it, and you're going to sell it for racing, you might have an option to have it in race shift. That would probably be quite a good idea. Never mind, rant over. Right, the next thing I need to do, because I've taken the side stand pivot off, is modify the side stand switch. Now, normally, you'd just link it out. You'd wire a couple of wires there, solder a couple of wires together, and the switch would think the side stand up all the time. But I've tested this, and by sticking a multimeter into the uh, socket in the other end, it turns out it has resistances that vary depending on where this switch is, where this like, little tit sort of slides around. So what I'm going to have to do instead is make a little plate that bolts over here with a little hole in it to hold that pin in place, so that I can still have the sensor attached and it will just think the side stands up all the time. So I've made this little plate and as you can see there's a little notch at the top here that stops the little pin spinning around and it's bolted in place. So that is now the switch for the side stand thinking that the switch is up all the time. So I can plug that in and uh, like you know hide the wires and bits out of the way. It would be nice to just have a little block with a couple of resistors in it that you can plug straight in to replace it, but I'm a better mechanic than I'm an electrician. That may be a development point for another day. The next job on the agenda is brake lines. The uh, front brake line, if you can see it sort of under here, it loops over the mudguard, and that's really not acceptable for race use because if something ripped the mudguard off, it would take the brake line with it, and then you'd have no front brakes, and these things tend to go badly very quickly from there. So what we're going to do is take all the ABS lines off it and put some normal like 
line straight from the mass cylinder to the front brakes and straight from the rear mass cylinder to the rear brake. But it does mean I've got to take all the ABS pipes off. Now these are the pipes of the ABS pump, which is sat up here. I'm sure they could have made it more awkward to get to, but that's where they've put it. So I've got to take all these brake lines off first, which is a bit of a game because they run over the radiator, over the top of the engine, up to the ABS pump under there. <sighs> it's also quite a messy job because you end up with brake fluid everywhere, which is horrible stuff. So I do have to be quite careful as I'm doing it. I've just started draining the uh, fluid out of the brake reservoirs when there was a knock on the door and the courier has turned up with the fairing. But this courier is not a normal courier. He's very quick. And um, he's got a bit of a reputation. Because it's Eric! And Eric, who is the first Northern Irishman to climb Pikes Peak, and he's raced the TT 50-odd times, and, you know, he's a general fast kind of chap, is actually going to be racing the Aprilia this weekend at Scarborough. Hello, Eric! Hello, everyone. So being as Eric's had a very long drive over from Northern Ireland over here via Milton Keynes to collect some bodywork, I think it's time we actually stop for a bit of lunch. So we're going to have a bit of lunch, have a bit of a chat and a catch-up, and we'll be back soon to finish off the build.